today, today I'm talking about the metabolic pathways in the pathophysiology and progression of a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, so um, I think this is a sort of a oversimplification of what we are doing uh, right now. So we wanted to look at uh, the pathophysiology and the physiology of these uh, uh, metabolic diseases. And uh, especially what uh, my group has been uh, uh, studying in the past years uh, is obesity, type 2 diabetes, and NAFLD, that uh, they are all very much connected. And we are doing this by uh, sort of uh, elucidating the pathway that leads from physiology to pathophysiology through the identification of uh, which are the metabolic fluxes and the alteration in these metabolic fluxes using stable isotopes. And uh, of course, uh, uh, right now we are doing a lot of metabolomic analysis because uh, uh, this is a very important important, especially for the identification of biomarker of disease. Uh, why type 2 diabetes? Because we know that uh, it's been, uh, is one of the uh, major diseases that is affecting the world population. Right now, over uh, 400 million people are um, affected by type 2 diabetes, and uh, we are expecting a 51% increase in the next years. And the same is for NAFLD, because uh, its uh, prevalence is now more than 25% in the general population. It's going up to uh, 20, 80% percent in type 2 diabetes and in the severe obesity and is paralleling the epidemic of obesity. So it is impossible to screen everybody to and also to treat everybody. So there is a need for early biomarkers of this disease, identify people at risk, and also try to prevent uh, this disease uh, because, as I said, it's, uh, um, it would be impossible to, to screen and to treat everyone. Uh, NAFLD is one of the major liver diseases, and uh, it's a metabolic disease characterized by the accumulation of lipid droplets in the liver, and it covers a large spectrum of liver damage because it's going from simple steatosis to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, that is steatohepatitis, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, but it's also a major risk factor also for type 2 diabetes and for cardiovascular disease. So today, I'm, what I'm, uh, my talk will be going through uh, these three major uh, topics, that is alteration in the metabolic fluxes, focusing first on glucose metabolism, then followed by amino acid metabolism and lipid metabolism. Uh, so we know that insulin resistance is strictly connected to all metabolic diseases and uh, to obesity, and uh, the result of this insulin resistance is increased glucose production with uh, the decrease in uh, peripheral glucose disposal. That's why uh, exercise is so important, as we heard before, because it's improving insulin resistance. And this is associated with high glucose and high triglycerides. And uh, also there is an impairment in uh, lipoprotein uh, assembly and secretion. Moreover, the muscle, it's in a catabolic state due to the uh, defect in uh, insulin action in the muscle, and there is an increased flux of the amino acids, especially during uh, fasting, that most of them, they are going back to the liver where they are catabolized. Of course, we have to take into account also the adipose tissue because insulin resistance in the adipose tissue has as a result of the high flux of the free fatty acids that are uh, uh, metabolized in all organs, but especially in the liver, they do increase uh, um, the triglyceride uh, uh, droplets, uh, formation of triglyceride droplets, and then uh, the high triglycerides uh, then into the, uh, into the plasma. But uh, there are also these effects, mm, there is an effect on uh, increased gluconeogenesis and uh, as an excess of all substrate, there is also an effect on the novel epigenesis. So the fluxomic uh, is uh, using uh, uh, the stable isotopes, uh, and you see here some of the major stable isotopes that are uh, used for uh, these kind of studies. And we do this uh, in humans. So by using the stable isotope, we are able to estimate in a, a sort of a non-invasive way uh, the major fluxes that are uh, hepatic glucose production, peripheral glucose disposal, VLDL secretion, uh, gluconeogenesis, de novo lipogenesis, and also 
uh, neck balance, protein balance in, uh, in the muscle. So today I'm going to show you some of the studies that we carried out in the, during these years. So we start with glucose metabolism. So the most uh, used um, isotope is the 662 glucose, that is a glucose with the two deuterium in position six, and that uh, is uh, usually uh, the, the experiment is done by infusing uh, this uh, small amount of this of this isotope in humans. After about like two hours of infusion, uh, we reach a, a tracer steady state concentration. And so by taking a blood samples and measuring by GCMS, we can measure the tracer to tracer ratio. How do we do this? Um, we do uh, using GCMS and uh, selective ion monitoring. We are monitoring uh, the uh, major fragment that contains uh, the uh, the carbon six and uh, the uh, deuterium. So in this case, we use uh, after acetyl. Um, acetic anhydride and pyridine derivatization, we look at the fragment 200, and we measure the area of a 202 to 200 corrected by the background. So then by uh, using uh, the, some uh, mathematical models, uh, we can uh, measure the, and estimate uh, the uh, hepatic glucose production. And uh, if uh, the, we follow the fasting condition by a meal, we can also measure how the glucose production in the liver is suppressed by by the uh, insulin that is secreted uh, after the meal, and also how the muscle is uh, taking up uh, this, uh, this glucose. So we did this uh, in um, subject with NAFLD, and uh, we started with the lean NAFLD because we didn't want the, uh, to have uh, the confounding factor of the obesity. And you see here that uh, glucose production is similar, but uh, slightly higher in uh, at fasting, uh, that is uh, at uh, the lower insulin in uh, uh, subject that uh, they have the NAFLD that are the red. But what is very striking is uh, after insulin infusion, this is a euglycemic to insulinemic clamp, two doses, the um, glucose suppression, the hepatic glucose suppression is impaired in those with NAFLD compared to uh, those without NAFLD. And this is a sign of insulin resistance. And indeed, the relationship between insulin and glucose production is a, an hyperbolic curve so by measuring the product of glucose production times insulin, we can find a well-validated index of hepatic insulin resistance. So also using isotope, it is possible to measure the uh, fraction of uh, glucose production that is due to gluconeogenesis uh, and the one due to glycogenolysis. We did this by having people drinking about 200 milliliters of deuterated water and sampling uh, after an overnight fasting. You see here that uh, subjects uh, that are non-diabetics, they have similar glucose production, but uh, the amount of gluconeogenesis that is the red is much higher in those that are obese compared to the lean subjects. While in the diabetic, uh, glucose production is increased, and this is also the major cause of uh, uh, fasting hyperglycemia, but also the gluconeogenesis is uh, increased. And the glycogenolysis, uh, uh, instead, it's not suppressed, but the total amount is much higher than in the controls. So another important uh, issue is um, uh, to study is the amino acid metabolism, and this is particularly crucial for uh, uh, obesity, but also for NAFLD, because these subjects tend to have uh, uh, sarcopenia, so a decrease uh, um, a decrease uh, muscle mass. And so the question is, uh, is this uh, amino acid metabolism uh, impaired in NAFLD? And so we, uh, we didn't carry out yet the uh, isotope tracer studies yet, but uh, we look uh, uh, using the metabolomic uh, analysis, especially because if you look here at the physiology, uh, so there are many amino acids that are involved in uh, um, cell metabolism and also in glucose metabolism, because you see alanine is the major precursor also of gluconeogenesis, but there are also other, metabol other amino acids like a glycine serine that are used to um, for uh, also for the synthesis of uh, glutathione and so also for uh, reactive uh, uh, to stop the reactive houses and species of sedative stress and also glutamate is important because it's a, it's a product of uh, transamination 
and also too important for liver is phenylalanine because uh, it's uh, the um, it's the only site where phenylalanine is uh, um, um, transformed to catabolized to tyrosine. So these are uh, some studies that we are carried on, and we look at the control subject, those uh, without NAFLD you know, versus a non obese NAFLD and obese NAFLD. You see how there is uh, an impairment in amino acid concentration in NAFLD compared to the uh, to the non nafld and especially we, we saw an increase in glutamate, valine as is leucine. Leucine instead it was very similar among the groups, an increase in alanine and lysine, and uh, uh, also a decrease in glycine. And glycine, it's, uh, it's a very important amino acid because it's always, uh, it's often found a decrease in all insulin resistance state. Uh, also, the gluconeogenic amino acid here that are mainly alanine and glutamate, uh, they are highly increased in, uh, in NAFLD, and this is paralleling, uh, paralleling uh, the AG hepatic glucose production. So this is uh, probably a sign that uh, they are used as a precursor for uh, gluconeogenesis. Uh, there are also the um, amino acids. Uh, uh, here you see the log2 of the NASH compared to the non-NASH, and uh, they are increased with uh, uh, also with inflammation and uh, fibrosis. Uh, most of them, other like glycine and serine, uh, instead they are decreased. And uh, there is, uh, um, we found that especially alanine and glutamate were um, uh, had a, like a step increase with a decrease of fibrosis in uh, subject with uh, NAFLD and NASH. And uh, when we look, uh, uh, we found that most of these amino acids that were also related to, to the liver and transaminase, especially gamma GT, but also ELT and AST. Uh, um, both aromatic and uh, brain chain amino acids were increased slightly with the degree of liver fibrosis. But what we found the real increase was this uh, GSG index that uh, we, um, we used and developed uh, with my fellow Melania Gagini. And because uh, this is uh, um, using glutamate, serine, and glycine, so the amino acids that are used to make up the glutathione, and so they are related to the um, to glutathione metabolism. So you see that those with the uh, fibrosis 3-4, uh, they have a much higher uh, GSG index compared to the other one, uh, showing that uh, there is probably a, an increased uh, demand of uh, uh, glutathione uh, and uh, there is a glutamate uh, also uh, metabolism that is uh, increased due to this fact. And uh, this was highly correlated also to gamma GT that is the major um, enzyme that is um, transaminating uh, the glutathione releasing uh, the glutamate. Uh, to conclude to the last part the lipid metabolism, and uh, we know that especially in the liver, that is very important, the source of uh, um, fatty acid that uh, are responsible for the TG assembly are the, one, the, the lipids coming from the diet or from the lipolysis uh, and so the free fatty acids. Uh, so in uh, obese compared to the non-obese, uh, we see that, that there is uh, uh, an increase in all lipids uh, and especially the triglycerides, but uh, while the, usually the fasting uh, um, total free fatty acids are uh, very similar, and uh, it's very important because the lipoprotein, especially the VLDL, have a, a large core of uh, triacylglycerol. So these are probably the most interesting uh, lipids to be together with the ceramides to be looked for the um, for the metabolism of um, the liver of subject with uh, NAFLD. Um, but the VLDL secretion is uh, has been shown to be increased in NAFLD. Here I put some studies that also use a flexomic, uh, a bolus of um, uterated glycerol with uh, to make Measure the VLDL triglyceride secretion that we see here increase. These are two different studies from the group of Dr. Taskin and, and Sam Klein that show an increase of VLDG to rate, while the VLDL uh, um, apolipoprotein B, B100 secretion rate is um, very similar um, between uh, NAFLD and normal uh, subject. And this can be measured using uh, C13 leucine infusion. Uh, as I said, uh, the free fatty acids are usually tended to be uh, very similar because uh, the, uh, the they are highly regulated by insulin. But uh, when uh, um, 
that when there, there was a, a uh, the study by Donnelly showed that, that the sources of hepatic triglycerides uh, uh, is indeed uh, uh, mostly due to uh, the uh, adipose tissue free fatty acids and uh, to, to about like 60%, 26% to the DNL and only 15% of the triglyceride composition was due to the lipids from uh, the diet. Uh, so we, we look also at the total and uh, OGTT free fatty acids in uh, control versus NASH. We found in this study that there was an, an increase of free fatty acids compared to the, um, to the controls. And also during the OGTT that the suppression due to the insulin was impaired in the NASH compared to the, to the controls. Uh, this is uh, uh, also the study uh, that where we, we infuse insulin to see there was a, a, an impairment. We saw that uh, the, the insulin was able to decrease um, the free fatty acid, but that they stay um, higher, even if the subject were non-obese. Peripheral lipolysis measured by the uh, treated glycerol also was uh, increased in uh, despite of the being non obese of the subject of NOFLD. And also, the, uh, but this was associated with an increase in beta hydroxybutyrate and the lipid oxidation measured by indirect calorimetry, showing that uh, the, most of the free fatty acids that then arrive to the liver they are also immediately oxidized. So there is uh, um, an increase uh, in uh, the shift to, um, to the free fatty acid oxidation probably rather than uh, the glucose oxidation in this subject due to the excess uh, free fatty acids that, that arrive into to the liver. So um, uh, we look also at biomarkers of hepatic lipotoxicity by using look, looking at the composition between saturation and uh, desaturation. And um, the SD1 index uh, looking at, uh, for example, 16.1 to 16.0 uh, free fatty acids is associated with adipose tissue insulin resistance and lipolysis rate, as well as uh, a DNL index. But also we found that uh, the ratio between saturated and polyunsaturated free fatty acids is strongly associated with the uh, decree with the degree of uh, liver fibrosis in the subject with uh, with the NASH. And that the similar results we found it in the triglyceride composition because the number of double bonds is a, an index of um, saturation. And uh, you see here that uh, subject with uh, higher fibrosis tended to have less unsaturated fatty acid and higher saturated fatty acids. And this was um, true mainly for subject with NAFLD that were non-obese where the degree of saturation was much higher. Um, also, the association with uh, some uh, mutation like uh, the EMBOS 7 mutation, it's also associated with uh, a different degree of, uh, uh, of uh, triglyceride saturation and also uh, with different uh, um, saturated uh, lisophosphoinositol and phosphoinositol. And this is a study that was, uh, we just published. Um, again, uh, by comparing, uh, correlating the saturation of uh, free fatty acid and triglycerides uh, with the index of uh, insulin resistance, we found uh, that uh, all index of insulin resistance via adipose tissue in the liver and also the OMIR that is uh, mainly systemic, uh, they were positively correlated with insulin resistance, uh, um, while the less saturated triglycerides were negatively um, correlated with uh, insulin resistance. Uh, just finally, uh, some uh, mention of uh, the novel lipogenesis. Uh, this uh, can also be measured using deuterated water. And uh, the study has, uh, has shown uh, that uh, there is uh, an increase in, um, in uh, the accumulation of fat and in the novel lipogenesis when uh, there is an excess uh, carbohydrate in the diet, while the excess of saturated fat and unsaturated fat, they have uh, no uh, effect on uh, um, the novel lipogenesis, but indeed they are um, uh, stimulating hepatic fat accumulation, so they are stimulating uh, triglyceride synthesis. Uh, lastly, some data that we have done uh, uh, on uh, 
uh, in uh, rodents uh, where uh, we use the deuterated water to look at the effect of uh, intraventricular um, uh, leptin and uh, to on the TG export and the novel lipogenesis, we found that leptin increased the G export and decreased the novel lipogenesis. And you see here uh, the data that we, um, we just published last year um, as uh, all the triglycerides uh, um, had a much lower um, due to incorporation showing a decrease in uh, uh, the novel lipogenesis compared to the, to the vehicle. Uh, in conclusion, metabolomics, lipidomics, and flopsomics are important tools to better identify patient phenotype and can be used to elucidate pathophysiological mechanism and identify circulating biomarkers of uh, disease. And with this, I'd like to thank uh, all my collaborators and, uh, and to acknowledge uh, the funding uh, that I received uh, to carry on these studies. Thank you very much for your attention.